Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers, chapter 5. We get an interesting chapter here, right? No, you know, you think polls and population. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper. Out they go. Lepers don't belong in the camp. Everyone that has an issue, again, that's ble bleeding, running, uh, uh, anything um, a boil that kind of stuff and whosoever is defiled by the dead so we're what we're doing now is we're taking the whole camp and we're purifying this is separation now God believes in separation they're just people who are unclean there are people who are vile. There are people who are wicked. Both male and female. Well, look at that. God says in his Bible that there is a male and a female. And that there's nothing else. Shall ye put out. Without the camp. Shall, uh, shall ye put them. That they defile not their camps. In the midst whereof I dwell. Now I would assume they follow along in the wilderness journey. They just can't be in the camp. Now, one thing that leper is, he's going to contaminate other people. you got to say, listen, male, female, mother, father, child, husband, or wife. If it's somebody of your family relations as far as that leper, you don't want the whole family to get it. And, yeah, you're going to love that, that, that kindred, that, you know, husband, wife, whoever he is. But you can't have him in the family. Because it will spread to the, to the children, it will spread to your family, it will spread to the other families, and it will spread to the tribes, and you can't have that. And the children of Israel did so, and put them out without the camp. So they're outside the camp. Now remember, there's a tabernacle, there's the children of Levi, and then there's the twelve tribes. And then outside that are those that are unclean. As the Lord spake unto Moses, so did the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. When a man or woman shall commit any sin, that man, wait a minute, when it commit any sin, that man commit to do a trespass. Sin is trespassing against the Lord. If I rob a bank, I, I, I've not only sinned against the bank, I have sinned against God. If I punch someone in the face, not only have I sinned against that man, I've sinned against God. I trespassed. I went across what God has established. And that's what people don't understand today as sinners. They don't even say they're sinners. Mommy and Daddy may forgive me for stealing the cookie, but it's still theft it's still stealing and God is holy we are not God says be holy for I am holy you cannot be before God as a thief we have trespassed we have crossed that line called sin we become a sinner and that person be guilty then they shall confess their sin 
The worst thing you can do is not confess. The worst thing you can do is hide. The worst thing you can do is ignore. The Bible says you must, even in the law, you must confess that sin which they have done. And he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof and add unto it a fifth part thereof and give it unto him against whom he has trespassed. Aren't you glad we're in the law? I mean, under grace, not the law. It's costly to be under the law. Now, yeah, you sin against God, but you also sin against a person. you got to make it right with them. Now, Jesus said to, to the disciples and all that, if somebody has sinned against you, you're to forgive him. You're to go to him, make things right. The Old Testament law says you got to bring 20%. To him, then you got to go to the never mind. You got to go to the temple or the the tabernacle and do your offering for this trespass offering that you've done and the sin offering. But if a man had no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, all right, you have offended somebody. You have crossed the line with somebody. And say that that person's died or, or, or glad for something like that. You owe somebody money. You owe somebody something. And that person that you offended is no longer there. He's gone. And there's no family you can recompense to. Let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord. Even to the priest. Now look at that. Unto the Lord, even the priest. Those priests were representatives and stand in for God. God says, you're going to give it to me then. And the way you're going to give it to me, because you can't come to me, I'm holy. You give it to that priest. Besides the ram of the atonement. So you got to bring a ram too, remember. Whereby the atonement shall be made for him. And every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his, the priest. We went through that in the book of Leviticus. And every man's howl thing shall be his, the priest. Whatsoever any man give the priest, it shall be his. So, you know, that's how the priest made a living. And it's amazing because, you know what? As far as that concept of the law, that priest would have always something to eat and have something. Why? Because all men have sinned. <laughs> There's never going to be a time that the priest will not have, you know, they'll be standing there at the time and, well, where is everybody today? Oh, they're all righteous and, and they're, they have no sin today. Yeah, right. And they, they're always going to be someone who's going to love the Lord and bring something. And the thing is, too, when you look at these priests, it's theirs, right? You know, they had to work for that. They had to cut it up, put it on the on the brazen altar. They had to go wash. They had to go inside the tabernacle, the bread and the candlesticks and the incense. before the, They had to do all that. That's labor. That's work. And there are people today in the ministry, they don't do a thing and they get paid by the people and they get overpaid by the people. And it's amazing here, they live in tents just like everybody else in Israel. You know, when, when we get to, to the Gospels with, uh, with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it actually says in one place about the high priest, his palace. He didn't have a mega church. He had a mega house. And that's why Jesus went in that temple knocking everything over because they were swindling the people, making a high price, making a high living off the people by overcharging for things and that's not how it was to be said it was supposed to be what the people brought to the priest that was their food but they couldn't be content and they were swindling the people and there are people who do that today out of pulpits and out of the ministry they make high, high and far more than what the people and then again there are preachers old time preachers in, in churches and he's got the most baggage bound car that's broken of all broken and he makes hospital visits and he makes visits of old old people in his congregation he goes out and does the post and his car i mean he's living by prayer everybody else has got a brand new car 
Everybody's got a nice car. Here, this preacher loves the Lord, and he, so from from the, from the scar, scale of one to ten, one being the poorest, and ten you you are just over rich. Are the people in the ministry that are the preachers? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them. If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him. So what's a trespass here? She stepped out. Not in the line. She stepped out of the line of marriage. Trespass is here's a line. And you cross it. You'll see an offense. No trespassing. What will you trespass? You go up and over that fence. Or the property line. And I think about that trespass sign over where I lived with Jeff. I don't know why this always sticks in my head, but it was a uh, electrical area. The power utility, just always that sign, no trespassing. You didn't want to go on the other side. He died. And a man lie with her carnally, okay, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband. She stepped out into marriage, fornication, adultery. He has no idea what has happened. And be kept close. No one tells. No one has no idea. And she be defiled. She's guilty. And there's no witness against her. Remember the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. One witness shall not be established for the law. According to the Old Testament. Neither she be taken with the manor. No one's ever caught her. There's no baby. Bathsheba was caught. She became pregnant. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him. Now look at that. You realize how many spirits there are in the Bible? There are unclean spirits. There's man spirit. There's the Holy Spirit. There's the spirit of devils. John says, try every spirit. Now many people will tell you jealousy is wrong. Again, on that scale of 1 to 10. One, you ain't got no jealousy, and ten, you got too much jealousy. A man ought to be jealous of his wife, and here is a guilty jealous. But a man ought to be jealousness of his wife that today, you know, his wife is passed on from man to man. You know, you go dancing, and everybody's dancing with her. That's wrong. There's only one person that should touch your wife, and that's you and your children. I don't even like, you said family, man, you know, they come, the women come up and hug me. I don't even like that. Because there's only one person that should hug me is my spouse and my children. To me, you're stepping out. But the spirit of jealousy come upon him. And he be jealous of his wife. Something's wrong with, with the situation between him and his wife. And he doesn't know what it is. And she been defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. So this jealousy is not of God. He's living with his wife, and just looking at his wife like, something's wrong here. And she can be defiled, okay? Or she may be as innocent as the flowers in the front yard. Just something's not right. He loves his wife. But it feels like there's, there's something wrong. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest. And he shall bring her offering for her. The tenth part of ephah of barley meal. And I understand by people, barley does not taste good. I never, I don't know if I ever had it. He shall pour no oil upon it. No anointing of the Holy Spirit. Nor put frankincense thereon. For it is an offering of jealousy. Add that to the list of offerings. Sin offering, peace offering, trespass offering, jealousy offering. Whether that woman is guilty or innocent, God does not want him living with that jealousy. Because that's harmful to the man. Causes anxiety. It's not good for his health. Bring her to the priest and offer a memorial Bring iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before Jehovah the Lord. Uh-oh. 
It's kind of interesting because the Lord, he's in the most holy place. Now watch this. And the priest shall take holy water. That's the that's that labor that they wash in. So she's probably standing right before the veil that goes in the most holy place. She's not in the holy place. In an earthen vessel, that'd be clay. Clay pot. And of the dust, Corinthians, Paul tells, we are earthly vessels. And Paul will speak about a husband and wife. And of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, that would be the, that would be the courtyard. He picks up some dust from that courtyard. The priest shall take and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head. That's her veil. I mean, he's not going to shave her head. And put the offering of the memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the... Now, what's it bitter? All he's taking is some sand. He's taking, he's taking a cup. Where the kind of the earth and vessel is. He's going there and got some water. He's picked up some dust in the thing and put it inside that cup. Nothing bitter. We'll see what the bitter is. And the priest shall charge her by an oath. And say unto the woman. If no man has lain with thee. And if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another. Instead of thy husband. Be free from the bitter water that causes her. So she can be as innocent as anything at this point, right? Does not prove she's guilty. Just the man's got an inclination. And make that marriage pure. Make even she if she is holy. Make so he does not think in the back of his mind there's something about her. And when he does this, he brings her to the priest and she's found to be clean on. And you know what? He does not have those thoughts no more. He's relieved. And that marriage is pure again what it is but that's not a good but buts in the bible they're good or they're bad buts but god is to is something you need to pay attention to when it says but god if it says but but god and it's good it's very good usually but then again it could be very bad if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband and if thou be defiled, and some man has lain with thee besides thy husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. It's going to be a curse. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when the Lord does make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. And this is what will happen if she has stepped out. Trying to get a confession from her. Now, in the Old Testament, anyway, adultery. If she says, yeah, I have. She's going to be stoned. I don't know which is worse to be stoned or start having your insides start rotting. But both are painful. And I think this would deter the women from committing adultery. And yet... It's never recorded in the Bible ever to happen. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels, inside your inside you, inside your stomach, and to make thy belly, or get in your belly, to swell. You're going to start bloating. And thy thigh to rot. Rot means give away, deteriorate. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. He shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause a woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse. And the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. See, that's where the bitter water. If she drinks it, starts getting bitter, and she starts getting sick, she's guilty. Now, on the lighter side, 
I don't want to take this light. She drinks it. She's just sitting there like, mm, that was tasty. And then it shows she's innocent. But she, oh, 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 that, oh, that was horrible. Uh, that's your guilt. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. Now he goes to the brazen altar and puts that offering on the fire. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar. Afterwards shall the cause the woman afterwards shall cause the woman to drink the water. When he has made her to drink the water, then if she cometh to pass that if she has de be defiled and has done trespass against her husband. That the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thighs shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among the people. She'll probably die. If not, she's going to be stoned. That's the law. Thank God for the law today. You just confess your sins. First, first John 1 John 1.9 If you confess your sins, he's able and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. And if the woman be not defiled. So it's not God tapping him on the shoulder saying, you know, check out your wife. It seems to me the spirit of jealousy does come upon the husband. And the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Ooh, it's like there's been something tampering with the womb there. And God has done that. He did it to Abimelech's family. This is the law of jealousy. When a wife goes aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law. So verse 29 is kind of weird because this is the law of jealousy. When a wife goes aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. It's almost like this spirit of jealousy knows. And yet you can't say it fully because that man may get that spirit of jealousy. His wife is as innocent and pure as anything. It's weird. But you know, there's, and it doesn't say it in the Bible, but you know, there's a spirit, there's a spirit of, of being a parent. That you'll be just doing whatever you're doing. You're out hanging out the clothes. Or you're making dinner. Or you're, you're sitting down reading. And then something says, you know what? Go check on that kid. And you get up and go check on that kid. And that kid's moments to death. <laughs> I've had that happen. And I remember as a child having my parents come walk in. In a moment I'm about to kill myself. Or about to do serious harm. That's a spirit speaking to the parent. Like, um. You need to go check right now. And here's that spirit of a husband. You need to do something right now. Now whether that be a God. As far as the child. Jesus said that there are angels that watch over. There is a Bible verse to assume. That children do have a guardian angel. Or something that they tell that parent. Hey. And any parent knows that. Then shall the man be guiltless. What? The man shall be guiltless from iniquity. It's almost like that spirit of jealousy is iniquity for him. But he's got to go and take care of it. Number one, it's for health issues. Number two, it's for your marriage because if she is innocent, and number three, if she's not innocent, then she's she's violating the law and living. If guilt uh, from his iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity if she's guilty. 
And we close with that. Right in the middle of numbers. Right in the middle. This is what the priest is supposed to do. This is the lineman of the camp. And get everybody out of the camp who's not clean. Reminder. That priest, if you give it to him, it's, it's food. And now husband, if you get the spirit of jealousy. That's weird. And then chapter 6, Lord willing, we're going to get back to the order of the holes, the Nazarite. Why wasn't that in the law? And then you don't ever see this carried out anywhere recorded in the scriptures. 